Apex Surplus is a legendary electronic store visited by hobbyists, engineers, Hollywood prop makers, you name it. Some of their iconic creations include the DeLorean Time Machine from Back to the Future. It was built entirely from parts found at Apex. All right, you're gonna meet Rick. Hey, Rick. Hey. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Thanks for meeting me here. Rick's a longtime customer at Apex and you restore vintage electronics and you've been coming here for a long time and you agreed to kind of show me some of your projects and give me a little tour. Welcome to Apex. Thank you. Here we are. My hobby is restoring vintage multimeters. I've been coming to Apex Electronics for just about 30 years. All the units you see here on the table, I've discovered in Apex. Two things I, I think of when I come to Apex. I want to have a list or in my mind exactly what I want to get. So if there's a specific type of screw, specific head or thread size, you know, I'll search for that. But the other part of it is keeping my mind open because it's kind of a treasure hunt. A lot of times they will get stuff that's simply dropped off, brand new. So I always walk through here looking at both sides of the aisle because there could be one little gem. You go, oh, okay. And they say, hey, you know, I want to buy that. Well, we just got that in five minutes ago. I'm going to buy it. Boom. You know, you may find little cables or scope probes, um, stuff like that. Something... Uh, you can use like this little one here was sitting behind another piece of equipment and I looked at it and I go oh my god this is a Simpson 260 series 2 very rare but very clean somebody may have bought it owned it personally his children may have sold it to Apex and it got squirreled away for years What's your favorite thing in the display case? Well, happens to be that one there that I happen to restore for them. The thermocouple milliammeter. Well, made by Sensitive Research, um, a company that was affiliated with a company that my father worked for back in 1962. Uh, I refinished the cabinet and everything because it was completely grimy. And I said, OK, um, sold it back to them because is a very unique piece of test equipment that I can't really use, but now they have it for display purposes. Sort of the Hall of Fame over here. I've never, I've never seen a piece of test equipment that is handcrafted in this way. Okay, this is the, the oldest one, well, possibly with the exception of this one here. This one here, um, it's re fully restored because the other hobby I have is woodworking. So combining the two uh, hobbies and two things I really enjoy. I was able to strip this down, stain it, varnish it, and then also replace the strap with uh, my own hand cut based upon what I saw on the web. That is a really beautiful piece of equipment. Thank you. And everyone says, oh, they don't make that every, you know, they don't make them like they used to. It's just a work of art, really, and you've done a great job restoring it. This is typically what you're going to find because this is a surplus warehouse it's not a department store so you're going to find used equipment like this it's got stickers on it but you know there's a layer of dirt and dust and grime on it because it's been used over the years I'm trying to find vintage replacement uh, rubber feet like this you'll see a lot of bushings uh, this is one of the things I really like about uh, Apex Electronics is you have this wide variety of hardware Sometimes some of the stuff you can, just cannot find. Some of the electronic equipment that was manufactured back in the 50s and 60s have very oddball sized screws. You know, you go to a big box hardware store and you get typically 440, 632, 832. Well, good. You ever hear of 448? Screws, nuts, washers. Some of the stuff is mill spec very high grade stuff so you told me that uh, you came through here and organized these one day well I, I help to you know and one of the things I do is I bring along a little magnet like this now are these stainless steel this has actually got a fiberglass case 
So if you carefully examine how I've polished it out, you can see the, the granules like that. It's not Bakelite. This is a little bit more rugged because this would be on a shipboard uh, environment. It's heavy. It's got some weight to it. Do you even know what all this stuff is in here? Or I mean, look at this. What about this guy? Restriction tester. Restriction. What well, is this? Well, you have drain. You have drain. It says Freon. Yeah. Oil trap. Exhaust. Is this maybe a test equipment for uh, refrigeration? Equipment, unit. Refrigeration unit. I would. That would be my guess. Thank God. <clears throat> that channel. I guess that's the channel number, I guess, that you mm -hmm. want to set it for. Wow. Vertical bars, color bars. Sound carrier, on, off, video. Wild looking. It just it just looks cool. I don't know. I just think this stuff looks cool. I mean, look at this. I would love to see this turned on. There it is. Ugh. All right. In the days before we had digital storage oscilloscopes or DSOs, how did you take a photograph of that waveform and you wanted to analyze it? Well, this would clamp onto the face of the Tektronix oscilloscope. And then wow. what you would have is a Polaroid camera back here and you could take the Polaroid snapshot. Wow. <laughs> to, to find one of these intact, it's like very, very rare. Again, in the prop rental department, you can't buy it. So you said that there was something here. Mm, I yeah. said if there was one thing you could have that's if not for sale. There's one in the prop thing department. I could have, the standard volt ratio box. Why? It's laboratory grade equipment, and this is how they tested voltages. It's temperature controlled. This was, shall we say, the epitome of what laboratory equipment would have back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. I'll tell Melissa to put this on your Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd have, I'd have to find a place in my house to, to put it. I've had the owners come up and say, hey, we got a brand new, got a, just uncovered a piece of equipment in our other warehouse. Would you be interested in buying it? Which is in case this one here. Uh, let's see. This here. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. Signal Corps, U.S. Army. Wow. Can I look at this? Sure. And what year is this from? This is probably World War II vintage. Oh, look at these brass knobs. Is this a Bakelite, maybe? Yes. The owner's brother uh, showed it to me. He said, are you interested? Well, there was about a half a second hesitation to my answer. <laughs> and I said, yes. Bomb spotting? It says bomb spotting here. For reconnaissance aircraft. This is an aircraft component. Yes. This is instrumentation. Yeah, that's mill spec. Let's let's take one down and see if we can. Oh, okay. Intervalometer camera exposure limiting type B6. Now, if that is not a tip off as far as mill spec, yeah. And it says specification. And it then says ex exposures remaining. There's a little yeah, yeah. A mechanical counter. Right there above my finger is a mil spec number. I love all this old equipment. It just looks cool. And you, you kind of just walk down here and you wonder what, what is all this Well, stuff. if you head over to the right there, to, to your right. OK. To your right. Are we sneaking behind the rope? Yeah, we're going to sneak behind the rope here. All right. <laughs> Let's see. If you see a, a flight of aircraft coming across the channel, well, the radar is bouncing it off. But could you tell whether it was friendly or a foe? 
So they developed something called IFF, Identification Friend or Foe, also known as a transponder. So they would send out a coordinated pulse on another frequency and they would have a special unit transponder in the aircraft and would respond back and it would be synchronized to the radar return. So if you got that return, you'd say, oh, that was a friendly aircraft. If you don't get it, okay, that's an unfriendly or that's a foe. That's really cool. It looks like pretty standard gauges. What's this Mach number? 0.5 to 1.5. Notice, notice how it's painted orange? Yeah, why is that? That's experimental aircraft. <gasps> really? Yeah. If you look at the documentaries about Chuck Yeager and the Bell, uh, I think this is the Bell X1. X1. Yeah. Um, and then subsequent aircraft from there. Uh, some of them were painted bright orange. So this probably came off of an experimental aircraft. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. It says Flight Test Division, Naval Air Test Center. Patunkins River, Maryland. Yeah, you're exactly right. There, Mach meter. It's called a Mach meter. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the Navy's equivalent to uh, our Edwards Air Force Base. Okay, gotcha. And, and Groom Lake and stuff like this that. This is rejected. <laughs> rejected. All right, well, I mean, I could I could spend the whole day in this aisle. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 try, I'm trying time. to give you a, a clue of exactly <laughs> I what I do know. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're getting lost in the aviation aisle over here. I know we, that's your first love. I know. I well, know. Just walking around exploring because we can do this on camera and you're going to miss like 95% of it. Give yourself some time. Yeah. Just think of it as a treasure hunt. Just look. It's, it's an adventure. You can get lost and, and have a lot of fun. But uh, thanks for sharing your equipment with me and Not a thanks for the, the tour and walking around. Not a problem. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Bye.